Pro-Leave UK Justice Secretary Michael Gove has attacked the invincible arrogance of Europe's elites, accusing Prime Minister David Cameron of scaremongering in an astonishing attack on his own party leader. The Justice Secretary said Cameron and other Remain supporters were treating British voters as if they were too small, too poor and too stupid to go it alone outside the EU. Though leaving is opposed by most economists, leavers say the EU is a job-destroying machine, while a senior former spy chief claims staying in the EU could import a terrorist virus because we can't control our borders. In response, the Prime Minister has generated a terrifying list of consequences from leaving, saying it helps ISIL, weakens the West against Russia and North Korea, generates migrant camps in the UK, provokes a criminal influx, job losses and poverty, and could even trigger a war. Are Europe's elites too arrogant? Does Britain treat its citizens as idiots? And is the UK too small to succeed alone? These are the simple questions we sought to answer. We began by asking the public, do you have any idea about how to vote in the EU referendum? Here's what they said. Well, I already have voted. I had a postal vote, so yes, I have a very good idea and I voted to stay. No. I, I'm just more confused by it, really. Nobody seems to be, I don't know, it's just very confusing. They just seem to be arguing with each other rather than putting out the facts. So, no. No, I think it's confused people more. Um, there's been valid arguments on both sides and then a lot of pure R rubbish spouted on both sides as well from what I can tell. No, they haven't really been, been very helpful because I grew up in Europe and the issues that are debated during this re referendum, well, before it takes place, are issues really which are relevant to the Conservative Party, which is trying to find a way in or a way out. What is important is what's happening to the Euro. What is important is the borders, what's happening to them. Uh, immigration is a big red herring because really it's the British government that has been in, in, in control of the borders. So the debate has tried to scare people, but I don't think it's been productive. Yeah, I think so, yeah. I don't, don't, um, I don't have any doubt of what I'm going to do, what will happen from the beginning. Yeah, I think it's, it's confusing that what people tend to do, there are benefits and there are, there are yeah, people think that they should not be in the European Union, but I think um, being a... Uh, being in the union would be helpful, that's my opinion. Our experts assessed how much the British public really know about the issues involved in the EU referendum. The truth is that both politicians and the media have been, I think, well, on tenor hooks looking at polls. Obviously, the, the Independent had a poll coming out uh, Friday, Brexit 10 points ahead. There's polls today showing that it's still extremely close. Uh, why is that? I think partly. Why was this referendum called in the first place? Um, not for any of the reasons that David Cameron or Boris Johnson are talking about, uh, but because of an argument about how best uh, British capital can uh, be profitable. Is it more profitable to be in Europe or is it more profitable uh, to be out of Europe, to have trade deals with the BRIC countries and, and so on? The truth is that doesn't answer any of the questions that ordinary people have, whether that's the question of the march of the far right across Europe, whether that's uh, austerity, housing, the fact that companies like BHS can go under and Philip Green can steal, uh, well, in truth, half a million pounds, you know what I mean, out of the, pe out of the pensions fund. Um, so why is it so close? Partly because I think ordinary people just aren't, getting it, aren't really getting answers to the questions that are in their heads, do you know what I mean? So I think people do have a sense of how to vote, but the truth is when you're asked a binary question, and both the answer, leave or remain, doesn't really deal with the problems that ordinary people have in their lives. No wonder that it's so close and so on. I think the most important thing to point out to begin with is that there are a hundred good reasons to leave. There are also a hundred good reasons to stay. And the British public has been presented with almost none of these ideas, almost none of these uh, good reasons one way or the other. Um, the whole debate has been marred by um, negative campaigning on both sides. A prime example of which is the Leave campaign um, using a very racist idea around uh, 
Turkish people. So the Leave campaign said that uh, um, Turkey is imminently going to join the EU and that Turkish people are inherently criminal and that they are going to um, cause a huge problem across the whole of uh, uh, the European Union. This is a very dangerous set of ideas and an incredibly uh, a good example of just the horrible, nasty, negative campaigning that's been going on. Now, the worst part about it is that the Remain campaign from within the government didn't negatively attack this idea based upon its racist genealogy, but instead uh, just said, well, Turkey's not about to join. So they didn't remove from credibility the idea that Turkish people are something to be feared, but instead uh, uh, allowed that racist idea to continue, but, uh, 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 but just negated the idea that Turkey were going to join. And, and that is really what has marred this entire political uh, uh, campaign. British Justice Secretary Michael Gove has criticised the invincible arrogance of Europe's elites and says Britain should leave. Are Europe's elites arrogant, incompetent or useless? Or all three? Here's the public's view. Um, from my observation as Australian, I think there is a class system right through Europe, including England. And, um, there is an elitist attitude amongst the uh, the wealthy and the um, the privileged. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, yes and no. It's two sides to every story. Um, it just depends what people agree with and believe with, and it's up to them to make their own mind of what they think of his opinion, really. No, I don't think he is. Uh, because the European Union, ever since the euro was created, the end of the Cold War, is trying to find a way to cobble things together and make them work. Uh, they may be a bit arrogant, but they're getting desperate as well. It's really, it's a question of trying to help, trying to understand, more than throwing stones at them, as far as I'm concerned. I don't think any country is particularly perfect or any, you know, so I don't think that I'm anti-Europe or anti any country, to be honest, or organisation of countries. But I think they all have the good points and bad points on different days. I do think the UK can survive on its own outside the EU. But I think in a world like we saw like in Orlando the other day, I think it's probably better to stay together in a larger community. I think it's quite insulting and I think it's trying quite a lot of scaremongering. What's the expert opinion about the levels of arrogance and incompetence that exist amongst Europe's elites? Well, look, I think Michael Gove is absolutely right in saying that Europe's elites are arrogant and, 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 and so on. Uh, by the way, I don't think Michael Gove is immune from that either. And actually, there are millions of teachers who celebrated when he was removed as Education Secretary because of the arrogance with which uh, he was trying to implement reforms uh, of, the, of the education uh, sector. Michael Gove recently gave uh, his support for David Cameron to continue to be Prime Minister after the EU referendum, regardless of whether or not um, Britain decides to leave or to stay. And David Cameron is somebody who is very arrogant. His second in command, his Chancellor of the Exchequer, um, George Osborne, is somebody who is useless. He has absolutely no uh, credentials to run the economy. And the man leading Michael Gove's um, EU position, the Leave campaign, Boris Johnson, has built an entire political career around being incompetent. So the idea that uh, it, that useless arrogance and uh, uh, incompetence are characteristics of EU elites alone is, is, is totally incorrect. Yes, um, European elites are arrogant, but arrogance is a feature of elitism, nothing more than that. And British elites are just as arrogant as their continental counterparts. The Justice Secretary also says that David Cameron is treating the British public as too small, too poor and too stupid to survive outside the EU. Does the public agree and why? Well, I'd, I'd say his, his, um, the, the Brexit point of view seems really small to me. In what way? Uh, well, it's a, it's a Little Britain uh, insular kind of attitude. I think the UK, there's a place for the UK in Europe, definitely. I think the time has passed. It's no longer a Great Britain and people are harking back to the colonial times and I think Britain has moved on from there. I don't have any strong views on 
one way or the other on that sort of comment? I don't think the Prime Minister has hand handled the, this issue very well at all. Uh, in fact, he's made his position a lot worse. I think he has not been competent in, in this particular instance. I think we can survive, so <laughs> just have to see if it works, if, we, if they go, so. No, I think that's really very politically motivated language, which is not really appropriate. I don't think that's true particularly. I think we're not at all too stupid to, to um, exist outside of the EU. I think there's many ways to produce an uh, economy within, within the UK doing what we do. I mean, we don't actually have to be a part of the EU or anything to do that. I think, we, I think he's pretty much belittling us as people that we, we can't think of on our feet and that we need sort of babysitting throughout society and I don't necessarily think that's true of the British public at all. So I think he should give us more credit and maybe we give him more credit. To what extent do our experts feel Britain is too small, too poor and too stupid to survive alone? Well look again, uh, I don't think it's something that Michael Gove is uh, immune to himself, do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Uh, both sides are engaging in scaremongering on a massive scale, whether that's David Cameron saying that he'll have to go after the, you know, if we leave, they'll go after the pension fund. Well, I'm sorry, David Cameron, uh, one of the first things that his government did in 2010 was engage in pensions robbery, taking millions and millions of pounds off ordinary workers in Britain. Uh, the truth is that um, whether we leave or whether we remain, the key question to defending pensions, defending jobs, challenging racism across the continent and so on, isn't uh, what David Cameron or Michael Gove says. They're both Tories. It's about ordinary people fighting back, whether that's teachers balloting for strike action now, whether that's the heroic fight by junior doctors, or whether that's the continued uh, heroism of refugees across the continent who refuse, well, refuse to die quietly, who continue to fight for a safe haven in Europe and, and so on. So. You know, does David Cameron treat people like they're idiots? Yes. But the truth is, this is a Tory game. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, we have to fight back regardless of the result of the referendum uh, in order to defend uh, the conditions that we have and to extend them. Because the truth is that Cameron has overseen uh, a massive uh, fall in living standards, the biggest one that we've seen since the 19th century. I think David Cameron's position has been to suggest that the UK is too weak to survive without um, the European Union. Um, so I agree with Michael Gove that that has been part of the Prime Minister's uh, Remain campaign. Um, but equally, I don't necessarily agree with Michael Gove that Britain would be infinitely better off without uh, um, being part of the European Union. But, both so but this is another prime example of the distortion uh, from both sides. Um, from within the government, leave and uh, uh, remain, of um, the distortion of the argument, the distortion of the basis um, of the debate toward presenting one extreme or another extreme. And it has been to the detriment of the entire campaign and to the credibility of both sides. David Cameron warns that leaving the EU would cost households £4,300 per year, create financial chaos, risk security, attract criminals, please ISIL and undermine peace, hinting at World War III. How do the public react to this? Well, I don't, I don't take a great deal of notice of the, the figure, the monetary figures, because I think it's, it's, it's no one knows again and it's scaremongering. I think the campaign has been run primarily on two issues. Um, the main issue, immigration and the economy. Um, and I'm not vehemently against immigration. Uh, and I think the economy will be stronger in. So those are the two things that sort of sway me, really. And I think all the, the small facts and figures that were given, no one really is absolutely sure. It's just surmising. And it seems to, to sort of the campaign for one way does one, and then the campaign the way feels it has to give a figure. You will lose out in this particular way. And I think that we don't know again. So I don't entirely trust them. I don't, I don't like things based on threat and fear. Um, I, I certainly understand how that plays into people's, you know, real concerns, and certainly people who are living on the margins and people who don't have a lot of money. This this does really matter to them. That kind of money is 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 everything for them. About sending your kids to school, about buying your groceries and everything. But so so it does matter. But um, 
I don't know if we can really be that accurate about the implications to that level of detail. It's quite a scary, you know, it's, it's scary things to listen to and a lot of people hear a few of those things and panic but I think the other side are just <laughs> saying similar things as well so it, it just seems a lot of fear rather than facts because okay they say that money but has that built up so and judging by previous sort of budgets etc they've, they've never had the facts there so I don't know. We don't know because everything is pro projections and until just a a month ago, the projection by the Treasury, projections that they made, were found out to be completely wrong. All the debate whether to go in the euro or not, etc., has found to be, uh, well, has been unfounded. Europe feels very strongly that by sticking together it will avoid another war, yes. And that is something worth, worth, uh, worth taking into account. Uh, but no, no more than that. I suppose it's whatever whatever meets their ends is a good way to campaign. If it if it turns people off, I suppose it's it's not a good way. I I think I, I suspect the big arguments for the remaining are fear based. The, the bad things will happen if we leave. So, I mean, I'm no sophologist. I don't know. I'm not no great expert on how how to persuade people to vote. So I, I leave that to the politicians. Uh, I think a lot of scaremongering but some of it is true. I mean, our currency has really gone down recently and I think that's a warning sign. So facts about the economy collapsing could be true, but also there's scaremonger on both sides. You know, if we leave, flights are going to be more expensive. If we stay, we're going to be losing a lot of money. And I think a lot is, is too much, so. Do our experts find David Cameron's warnings about poverty, financial chaos, crime, terrorism and war persuasive? So this is another example of David Cameron negatively campaigning in exactly the same way that the Leave campaign has negatively campaigned as well. He's using scare tactics such as the using the idea that there's going to be an influx of criminality into the UK, like the, uh, the leader of uh, ISIL would be pleased with the result. These are non-falsifiable statements. You, you make them in the knowledge that nobody can disprove what you're suggesting. Um, these are scare tactics. These are things that people, quite rightly, are fearful of. If you say them enough, people are afraid of the rise in crime. People are afraid in the rise or pleasing terrorist groups. People are afraid of losing um, income into their household. So these are things that uh, uh, David Cameron is trying to tap into. And it's another example of just how distorted the uh, debate has really become. Has the EU referendum debate demonstrated Britain's talent for democracy or exposed its treatment of the public as idiots? The public said this. No, I think I think they probably have it dumbed down, yeah. And I don't don't feel it's been a you know terribly edifying democratic uh, spectacle really. Um, I think we we vote we voted for our leaders in the first place and then I don't really feel like this needs to go out to uh, poll. No, I think I think it is. Um, I, I think it's a very democratic process. Um, everybody has their say in it. Probably way too much. Both sides, I think, are um, overextending what um, their case is. Um, I think people will make their decisions on the 23rd of June, and then we'll see what happens from there. But yeah, I think it's a good democratic process. Um, yes, I do think it's a bit patronising, um, but it depends how everyone takes it because people take things differently, so it's up to them to make up their own minds, but I do believe it's patronising. It's not really been a credit to democracy because it's not been well thought of. Uh, the, the main issues have not really been looked at. I personally have not derived any advantage, uh, information-wise, from it, and, and, and it's a shame. I mean, I've been living in this country for 40 years almost. So, so, uh, but I know both sides, and, and no, it's not been a credit. I think politicians are treating us like idiots. Why is that? Because I think it's more about their political gain than actually... Because they haven't said either way what's going to happen if we stay in or we stay out. It's just more scaremongering, I think. We invited our experts to assess the extent to which the EU referendum debate has promoted democracy or revealed an attitude that treats the public as stupid. I don't think Britain is, a is somewhere where there's a particular talent for democracy. I mean, we've currently got a majority government which is operating on 24%, uh, well, a, vo a vote from 24% of the British public. I don't think that's 
talent for democracy in truth. Uh, and as I said, there are you know whole sections of uh, the British public whose voices aren't heard in this referendum on either side in tr of, of the official campaigns. You know the voices of the 250,000 people which joined. Uh, the People's Assembly demonstration on June the 20th last year aren't being heard. The voices of the 100,000 people who marched on September the 12th to say refugees are welcome here uh, aren't being heard. And for me, that's a much greater show of democracy. Uh, 600 people in a palace in one of the most expensive places in the world, the, the city of Westminster, making decisions. Or uh, hundreds of thousands of people on the streets demanding uh, genuine change. I think that both sides of the government, both the Leave and the Remain campaign, have done a fantastic job of undermining any kind of um, real political engagement of the public in making an informed decision by presenting only the very worst arguments in the worst possible way. Um, there has been no positive campaigning whatsoever. There has been mudslinging personal attacks and smear campaigns against individuals on both sides within the government. And this is just within the government. This isn't even talking about, you know, uh, 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 two different parties. This is just within one party. And it really characterizes David Cameron's entire political leadership of the Conservative Party. He swept to electoral victory um, by negatively campaigning against the previous government, the Labour government. He used the negativity against his own government. He used the Liberal Democrats um, to shield his party against the negativity that his government's policies uh, um, put on the public. And now it's the same again. He's created a culture of negative campaigning for within the Conservative Party. And it's just no, another example of that. Um, it is completely undermining of democracy. It is completely undermining of the intelligence of the public to make a correct decision. And both sides have their own political agendas, they both have their own economic agendas, and that is really what this is about. But rather than presenting facts, rather than presenting figures to the general public that uh, could be used for the general public to make an informed decision, to make a correct decision um, based upon the interests of themselves, they have attempted to use fear, they have used racism, they have used all types of different negative, horrible and nasty tactics in order to achieve their own political and economic agenda. The scaremongering on both sides of the EU referendum debate has exposed the politics of Britain as ugly, silly and undemocratic. That's because much of the discussion has been based on name-calling, confusion and fear, meaning that how the public decide on the 23rd of June has shifted from fact towards guesswork. In effect, this childish debate has reduced the biggest decision facing Britain in a generation to little more than a lottery, and that is a very poor reflection on British democracy.